through 17. I'd like to thank the pastor for this opportunity to bring forth the word tonight. As always, it truly is an honor and a privilege any time to bring forth the word of the Lord. But First Chronicles chapter 14, starting with verse 13 and reading down through 17. And the Philistines yet again spread themselves abroad in the valley. Therefore David inquired again of God, and God said unto him, Go not up after them, turn away from them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And it shall be when thou shalt hear a sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then shalt thou go out to battle. For God has gone forth before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. David therefore did as God commanded him, and they smote the host of the Philistines from Gideon even to Gazar. And the fame of David went out into all the lands, and the Lord of the brought Lord, and the Lord brought forth brought the fear of him upon all the nations. Let us bow our head in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. We give you praise and glory that you, God, who reigns on high and that there's none like you, Lord. Even right now, we rebuke any attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be in one mindset and one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may have his way. Anoint my mind and my lips to bring forth your words, and anoint our minds and our lips to receive your message with gladness, that we may remember it throughout the week, but even greater than that, that it would take root in our hearts. And we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Tonight, with the Lord's help, I'd like to preach on this thought, the sound of salvation. The sound of salvation. As we look at this passage here in 1 Chronicles chapter 14, we find that the Philistines have come up against David there, and David has already defeated them once and sent them packing backwards. But here in 1 Corinthians Chronicles 14 and verse 13, we see something. The enemy didn't stay away forever, but he came back, and they came up against David. David, during this time, is early in his kingship, he had already defeated the Philistines once, but now they're back. And almost better than ever. David, you may have defeated us once, but I'm telling you what, we're coming back the second time. You're not going to take us again and again and again. How many of you realize that we are in a spiritual warfare? That we are in a daily fight against the enemy? Day in and day out he comes in and he's ruthless. He won't give you a break if he could. Uh, would allow it, but rather he's constantly there. You may get the victory at the altar once in a while, and he may give you that time to cool down, but I can promise you one thing, the very next morning, guess what's going to happen? You're going to hear a knocking on the door, and the enemy's going to try to get his foothold right back in where he once was. This is exactly what we see is going here on here in First Chronicles. The enemy was chased down once, but now he's back, and he's trying to get a foothold in once again. But you know what? Just as David, we are in a battle, and we are not just peasants with pitchforks, but rather we are soldiers of the Most High King. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, the Apostle Paul wrote, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my courts, and I have kept the faith. In 2 Timothy 2 and verse 3, he wrote, There thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You realize that we are not to go off and find a safe space to hide and cry, but rather we are in a constant fight against the enemy on a daily basis. We are to pick up our weapons and fight. And that is exactly right. God did not say, I have made you soldiers and left us there. But he said, I have given you the equipment. I have given you exactly what you need on a daily basis. Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, the Bible says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through the 
through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That is exactly right. It is not by your might. It is not by your strength. It is not by my might. It is not by my strength that we fight this battle that we are in against the enemy. But it is by His might and it is through His power that we fight through the power of the Holy Ghost that we fight through a daily basis against the enemy. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not material. We don't pick up a physical sword. We don't pick up a physical frying pan and chase them and beat them every single day. But rather the weapons of our warfare, they are spiritual. They are not carnal. And they are mighty to the point down a stronghold. The Word of God states that the Word of God is sharp. It is powerful. It is quicker than any two-edged sword. We have the weapons to fight the enemy. We are good soldiers. And God has not left us alone, but rather He's given us what we need to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. And every day, every second practically, we are in a battle. It is the battle for our life. The devil wants to come in. He wants to destroy. He wants to pull down. He wants to steal your very soul. He'll take as many of us with him as possible. But God has done everything he can to make sure we press on. But I'm telling you that our enemies are not only spiritual, but sometimes they are very much human, just like you and I. In Psalm chapter 120, and verse 2 through 4, the Bible states, Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. What shall be given unto thee? Or what shall be done unto thee, thou false tongue? Sharp arrows of the mighty with coals and juniper. What is this? This is your brother. This is maybe your sister. Maybe those that you work with on a daily basis. Going to want to know that they're saying, have you heard about so-and-so? Did you see so-and-so doing that over there? Did you hear so-and-so? I bet you that Christian, that as much as they claim, I think they almost cursed. They did something that they shouldn't have been. You know people are watching us on a daily basis. And the enemy has set up people in our life to purposely try to bring you down, bring us down. You know why sinners sit in church week after week and never get changed? Why, why do God allow those people to stay in church? It's not necessarily God, but the devil cannot use an individual if they're not in that church. If they're all Holy Ghost filled people, Christian that serving God, loving God, there's harmony and there's unity there. But if the devil can slip somebody in there to cause division, cause confusion, that's why he leaves them there. The same thing is true in our own lives. You know that the devil sets up people in our own lives to try to bring us down, to try to discourage us, to give us a bad name, to give us a bad reputation to discourage us emotionally, it discourage us physically, and it discourage us spiritually. He has done everything he can to bring us down. In the, the last verse here, it said in verse 4 that there are sharp arrows, mighty coals of juniper, with a juniper tree. The wood was used almost like we would coal in a daily basis because it burned hotter. So they would make arrows out of this juniper and light it on fire. If we go to the New Testament, the Bible says that our, we have a shield of faith. What is that shield of faith meant for? What is it to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy? It doesn't say just the fiery darts of Satan, but it says of the enemy. You realize that not all our enemies are spiritual. But some of them are physical because the devil is using them to try to bring us down. But we have weapons, and our weapons are not weak, but they are mighty to the pulling down a stronghold. But we also have spiritual enemies. The Lord said in, in Luke chapter 22, verse 31, And the Lord said, Sign and son, behold, Satan hath desired that, to have you that he may sift you as we. But in 1 Peter, we have an encouragement and an warning. But in 1 Peter 5, verse 8, be sober, be vigilant. What is that? Be paying attention. Don't let your guard down. Don't let your shield down. Don't let your sword lay by the river. But rather be vigilant, be constantly watching, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You realize that we have an enemy that is out there that's trying to take us down, but we need to make sure that we're being sober, that we're being vigilant. What is that word that we're constantly watching? If we go back to the time of Gideon, you know one thing he did to weed out the troops? He washed how they drank from the river. Anyone who wasn't paying attention, you're gone. God's a cut up. 
What would a good soldier do as he's there, get him to the by the river while he'd bend down on one knee? He'd be looking around at all times. He'd be scooping up that water and taking a sip, constantly being aware of his surroundings. Be vigilant, be sober, be watchful, for you have an enemy that wants to drag you to hell. He wants to take your soul. We are in a mighty, mighty fight. And though times get rough, <coughs> endure the hardness, but watch and pray and keep your weapons because they're mighty and powerful and they're spiritual to the pulling down of strongholds. Here in this passage, the enemies already came against David once, but now he has set himself up and he's coming again. David, we're not going to let you take this valley. David, we're not going to let you take that hill and keep it. But rather, we're going to take it back. But what did, did God tell us, tell David to do? He said, wait. Just wait a second. What have been our instructions according to Psalms chapter 46 and verse 10? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. You know, sometimes the hardest thing we can do is wait. But God, do you know what so-and-so is saying about me? But God, do you know what so-and-so is doing over there? God, they're trying to bring me down. They're working against me everywhere I go. Or maybe it's not a physical person. God, the enemy's coming to end. How am I going to provide for this? How is this going to be taken care of? All the while, God is saying, just wait. Why did God tell us to wait? Because he wants to be exalted among the heathen. He wants to everyone to know there is only one God in this entire universe. And I have all things under control. God wants them to know it doesn't matter. Nebuchadnezzar maybe came in and took over Israel, but I allowed it. For I am the God that sets up kings and when Cyrus comes in, I will tear down Nebuchadnezzar because I am the God, God that takes down kings. Why? Because all things are in his control. Sometimes the hardest thing we can ever do is wait. But there are times where we just have to pause. Say, God, I'm placing it in your hands. And when God moves, God, I know you'll fight for me. And it'll all come out in the end. Because that is exactly what God told David. Just wait. But I don't want you to go face the enemy. I want you to go back a little bit. I want you to go up there and wait. God, why do you have me going up and waiting by the mulberry trees? Because God goes, you know what? You fought the enemy last time. You fought the Philistines last time. You know what? This time, I'm going to fight it for you. It's not by your own might, and it's not by your own strength. You know, you can only do so much, and you defeated them last time. This time, let me defeat them. You know, there are times we, when we get so much in the valley where it seems like the enemy's coming like a flood, and there is no place to go. It's all doom and gloom. We are surrounded on all sides. The enemy is standing on the hills, looking down on us. There's all clouds over us. We can't see the sun, and it seems like the sun's not going to shine for days. But yet, all the while, God's telling us to wait. Wait. Why? Because I will fight for you. In Isaiah 59, verse 19, the Bible says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard around and bow against them. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 17, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, be dismayed, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. For the Lord will be with you. God doesn't leave you in the valley to make you vulnerable. He doesn't leave you in the valley to make you feel alone. But rather there's a greater plan that God has going on in the background. As Sister Beth comes to the piano, if we would study out that phrase, the sound of a going, it can be translated to the sound of marching. 
In Jude chapter 1 and verse 14, the Bible says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Luke chapter 2, verse 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Daniel chapter 10 and verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty-one days, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. And at that time shall Michael stand up. In Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1, the great princes which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never before. There shall be a nation even to that same time, such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one shall be found written in the book. Psalm chapter 34 and verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver him. There was a time when Elijah and his servant was on the mount. And Ahab came under the orders of Jezebel to get Elijah. And the prophet's servant got scared. And Elijah said, Lord, open his eyes to see. And he saw the mountains were covered with the chariots of the Lord. And angels round about him. Now it doesn't matter what we're facing in our everyday life. It doesn't matter the situation. Perhaps we are in a situation like David was. We drove the enemy out once already, but now he's back and it seems better than ever. And it seems like we're stuck in the middle of the valley and we're surrounded on all sides. And the enemy is there and getting closer and closer and closer. And we look up and we don't see the sun, but all we see are gray clouds. And it hears our ears hear the thunder rumbling in the distance. But if only our spiritual eyes would be open, we would realize what exactly that thunder is. That thunder is not being produced because of the striking of the lightning, but rather that thunder being produced in the clouds above is what Enoch prophesied. The rumbling in the heavens is the marching of the, of the saints of God of the angels of God getting ready to mar march and move on your behalf. All the while, God is just saying, wait, look up. That sound which you think is thunder is not thunder, but rather it's the army of the host of heaven getting ready to come to the aid of the servant of the Lord, getting ready to come to the aid of the soldier of the Lord. You may feel like you're surrounded now, and you may feel like it's nothing but doom and gloom, and there's nowhere to go. But just wait on the Lord, for the angels and the armies of heaven are getting ready to strike through and march through and break through this house and march on your behalf, sending the enemy to fight tonight. Do you know who you serve tonight? Do you know who is on your side? As Sister Beth is playing, do you know who goes before you? Is he a friend of yours? Because the God of angel armies is on my side. Are you living right tonight? Maybe you found yourself in a situation. Maybe you found yourself in a valley. You didn't place yourself there. But you are not left there to die. You may feel surrounded like the enemy is coming like a flood. But what does the Bible say? The Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard and fight on your behalf. If only we would just wait on God, we would realize that at any moment, the clouds are going to break, and the armies of heaven is going to come through and break through the stronghold of the enemy. That sound of thunder is really the sound of marching, because God said, you have fought once, but I'm going to fight for you this time. 
take hold of the armies of heaven that are break through and fight on your behalf. You fall once, but God is saying, come now, come wait on me, lay it, lay it at my feet, and let me fight for you this time. I will send the enemy to fight. Is that you tonight? Why don't you find yourself a place in 